Success lies in the journey, not the destination. So if you're going to be successful in anything like building a business or growing your career and achieving something big and solving big problems for your customers and clients or your company and organization and team, then you really need to understand this strategy journey and how it works. How else are you going to build success, right? Well, that's what we're going to cover in this video where I'm going to introduce what is this strategy journey? What are the key things you need to learn about it to help you succeed when navigating your next journey or any strategy journey to achieving success? So let's get started. Welcome to the Strategy Journey channel where we provide strategies and tips to help business professionals, consultants and entrepreneurs to grow, innovate and disrupt their own businesses and careers. We're here to help you stay on top of the business transformation game in our very fast changing and increasingly digital economy. I'm Julie Chu, lead author of the Strategy Journey book and a relentless creator, designer and architect of products, services, businesses and organizations. And I'll be sharing all of my experiences and lessons learned in building my portfolio carry on this channel so you and others can gain the insights you need and want to succeed on your own strategy journeys. We'll be posting videos regularly here, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be notified if you like what you're learning and you want more. Oh, and make sure you don't miss the key examples that I provide throughout this video and all the way to the end. I highlight some of the steps and paths used by some of the most successful businesses and people to achieving successful strategy journeys and that I use on my own projects and with my clients, of course, too. So what is the strategy journey? Well, it's a five-step process or the five stages that we all go through in order to solve a big business problem. And on this journey, that's where you can build the success or create successful outcomes. Now, before I go through what are these five stages in the strategy journey, it's important to clarify the definition of what is business first. According to the Collins Dictionary, which was my favorite pocketbook before the internet, the web, and Wikipedia were invented, here are some definitions for the term business. Business is work related to the production, buying and selling of goods and services. Or business is used when talking about how many products or services a company is able to sell. So if business is good, a lot of products or services are being sold. And if business is bad, few of them are being sold. A business is also an organization which produces and sells goods or which provides a service. So that's three definitions here. The first one is about the act of buying and selling and interacting with customers. The second is about the performance of the business and the third refers to the business itself. A fourth definition is business is work or some activity that you do as part of your job and not for pleasure. So now it's referring to business as a job, as a career, as what you do to make a living. So again, you can use business to refer to a particular area of work or activity in which the aim is to make a profit or your income. You can use business to refer to something you are doing or concerning yourself with. And you can even refer to business as important matters that you have to deal with. If you say that something is your business, you mean it concerns you personally and that other people have no right to ask questions about it or disagree with it. And then you can also use business to refer in a general way to an event, a situation or an activity. For example, you can say something is a wretched business or you can refer to the assassination business. The whole business is very puzzling and you can certainly use business when describing a task that is unpleasant in some way. For example, if you say that doing something is a costly business, you mean it costs a lot, such as parenting can be a stressful business. So I hope you can see that with these definitions, business refers to companies, organizations, our careers, jobs, events, situations, activities that we do, as well as products and services and the act of buying and selling and trading. And the truth is, we have business if there is a problem to solve and valuable outcomes to create, produce and deliver for a set of customers, users or stakeholders, even if that is ourselves. If there is no problem and no customers, users or stakeholders who need help solving a problem that doesn't exist to gain better outcomes, then there is no business. A business must have a purpose. 
And the strategy journey is the process and stages that all businesses and that you go through in order to solve a problem or a set of problems before the journey starts again. So it's the business life cycle and the problem solving life cycle. And I actually discovered this journey myself because I was working on businesses and in all these different business ventures to solve all these problems from one costing a few hundred dollars in my personal growth projects to many hundreds of billions in dollars when it comes to my biggest client projects. I also come from a line of merchants and entrepreneurs in my family who have always been in business. And so I've always been curious about what made my ancestors succeed or fail too, and we definitely have both. I think understanding your own history and heritage goes a long way into understanding how you function and what makes you who you are and what you like to do and so it affects your career journey and I think it's important that we look at ourselves as a business or our career as a business too. So have you considered yourself as a business or looked at business strategies for driving your career growth or have you mainly looked at learning strategies for use in your work or your job and not really connected the two? I would love to hear about your experiences so please add them in the comments below. So what are these five stages that you'll be navigating in the strategy journey that you need to really understand and learn from if you're going to be successful in business? Stage one of the business life cycle is about motivation and leadership. This is about setting the direction and purpose of the business and organization. Remember when I defined what is or makes a business? I explained how businesses exist for a purpose to solve specific problems for customers. So This is really important to have this purpose and it takes good leadership to do that properly to set the mission and vision and goals and objectives. Without this, then there is nothing to direct the strategies and activities of the business. And in today's changing environment and especially the digital economy, with all this disruption that we face, leaders have to be agile and become good at adapting their companies and organizations, big or small, to new situations. Some of the most successful companies in the world are there because they have visionaries that lead them like Apple, which has this original mission and vision statement from the late founder Steve Jobs. To make a contribution to the world by making tools for the mind that advance humankind. Apple as an organization is still living and breathing this mission and vision statement to this day. And look at all the missions which may have seemed crazy to some that are driven by Elon Musk and all his various ventures and projects from SpaceX to Tesla. So to succeed on your strategy journey, you must have motivation and leadership with a clear mission and vision to set your direction for success, or you could be wandering around and going nowhere for sure. The next stage and stage two is business design. With the mission and vision set up in stage one, now you can define the strategy to take this business forward It is where the benefits to customers are identified and how these convert into sales and revenue or income for the business. It's about working out how and where to make money. As without this, there is also no business. A business needs to have commercialized offerings as part of its business model. And the business model is where disruption is having the most impact when it comes to affecting the survival of the business. So just look at all the business models that were disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic that have changed how we and businesses need to run ourselves in order to survive. I was lucky enough to travel recently on a long haul flight from London to Sydney, Australia, and my air ticket was ludicrously expensive because the business models for air travel have been disrupted. Airlines have to stay in business and it's hard with such expensive overheads to get every flight off the ground with less people able to travel because of social distancing, extra cleaning, extra safety checks. And don't forget the inconveniences and stress and the costs to traveling customers. And with many people moving to remote working, some shops, restaurants, and cafes in big cities might no longer have the foot traffic to stay afloat either. On the flip side, look at the extra growth and profits taken by online businesses or suppliers of online services like Amazon and Deliveroo, Food Panda, and Zoom. These businesses were already disrupting the existing business models of more traditional businesses before the pandemic, but their growth has certainly exploded through the increased demand caused by the pandemic. And this growth is set to continue. 
So I hope you can see that business models come and go, and it's important to keep adapting the business model, which will then change how the business or company operates in the operating model, of course, and also what value is created for customers, stakeholders, and the business itself. And there are many different forms of value that can be captured, created, produced, and delivered by a business or organization, which happens in the next stage or stage three of the business journey when value design takes place. The business design typically focuses on the commercial aspects only, but the true value of what a business can produce and deliver can include more than just the financials, and also what is offered or provided to customers in return for their patronage, even if these are key to the success of the business, of course. Customer value is more than just about pricing, and it is actually about delivering specific experiences and solving problems for customers along their customer and user journeys to influence how they think, act, and behave. And there's also business value too, which can include things like the business's capabilities and how it functions internally. What is this value chain and the value streams that it uses to serve its value propositions to its customers that are offered through its business model, which we would have designed in the previous stage? And also, what's its culture, expertise, intellectual property and IP, the value of specific assets? And of course, social value as well, which is carried by a business or organization's brand in society. These are all aspects to value design, which is about working out what the business can offer in value to customers, users, and stakeholders, the business itself, and society. And this is what really differentiates it from its competitors. So there is so much opportunity to offer new forms of value and new experiences to customers, especially if you're looking at digital experiences, given the new technology advancements available. But it's not just that. Customers are also changing their behaviors for sure from the new technology available as well as the pandemic course circumstances. In fact, any form of adverse situation or adversity often presents new opportunities for change and transformation. Just look at how much time people spend on their smartphones and on social media or gaming and on the flip side, exercising or eating. In fact, what are the changes in behaviors based on the four pillars of a good life from Aristotle? our famous Greek philosopher, which I highlight in the Strategy Journey book, Health, Wealth, Knowledge, and Connectivity. These are all the value creation opportunities that we can all look at in our businesses and our careers. Now, a successful business is often backed by a well-run organization, and that's why the next stage, or stage four, is business architecture. As said by General Dwight D. Eisenhower in this famous quote, you won't find it difficult to prove that battles, campaigns, and even wars have been won or lost primarily because of the logistics. So how do you architect and orchestrate how the organization is running front to back, end to end is key. Covering all of those people, processes, data, and technology systems in different locations, all of these logistics. So how slick or effective and efficient is business operations? All of this logistics. This applies to businesses both big and small, of course, and it is key to supporting business growth. People often describe Apple's success as coming from the brilliant ideas and marketing from Steve Jobs. But the truth is, Apple really grew under the leadership of Tim Cook when he first took over as head of operations and COO. When he delved into the operating model of the business globally, we cover this in detail in the Strategy Journey book. In fact, another case study that we cover is Amazon. It's no secret that Amazon's success is based on operational excellence, as we've heard from numerous Jeff Bezos interviews over the years when he was still in charge. We all know Amazon is a logistics powerhouse, and that comes from its solid business architecture. And finally, we have stage five, which is business transformation. It's so important in this digital age to stay relevant and innovate, to stay ahead of the game, or disruption sets in and takes over. Nothing lasts forever and companies and organizations must learn to transform or they could evaporate. And we've seen with the COVID-19 pandemic how easy it is to disrupt existing business models. And post-COVID, there are still many issues with the global supply chains and strong skills and labor shortages as economies speed towards recovery and growth. So business transformation and especially digital transformation is key, and it is also necessary in order to support continuous growth through continuous change. In the Strategy Journey book, I highlight the transformation journey and growth journey of Tesla and DBS Bank, as well as the Apple transformation journey that started when Tim Cook was appointed head of operations under Steve Jobs. So how good is your business, 
company, organization, and team, or the client that you serve at adapting and changing and transforming. Every business and every business problem, including your career journey and your personal growth journey, goes through these five stages in the life cycle of a business. And it's also a continuous cycle that just starts again after each problem is solved or not solved, as you have to move on to the next one. This is why there are peaks and troughs in all businesses too. You see this in all the life cycles. But if you keep transforming to make improvements, then that is how you grow and evolve. So you see this overall growth and evolution life cycle too, such as in the stock market, share prices, inflation, and currency increases in value, infrastructure being built, house prices going up, salaries rising, etc. I've been highlighting these three trends and digital economy challenges already throughout the strategy journey stages. But the reality is that in our fast changing world and increasingly digital economy, which has been heightened by the COVID-19 pandemic, all businesses are experiencing these three economically driven challenges. Business models are getting disrupted faster than ever before. And this is because people and customers and users are changing their behaviors and to lead different lifestyles. And so their customer journeys change too. This of course means we need lots of new services or innovations to help customers to solve all their new problems. And so there's a lot of opportunities for sure. But with all this change and other environmental and societal effects and issues, it's also becoming more difficult to transform sustainably as costs mount. With all these problems to focus on across any business, this is why it's important to be problem specific, service led and value driven when navigating the stages of the strategy journey that form the business life cycle. Now, these trends and patterns that I have both observed and experienced for myself throughout my career journey led me to discover that there was a problem solving pattern too. What can I say? I'm a problem solving geek. And that is why I devised the strategy journey framework and methodology to help us with this process to solve problems better and faster. And to also live and breathe these three strategy journey principles to be problem specific, service led and value driven. And of course, you need to learn how to make your team and your organization that you support follow these principles too, not just yourself. That is the hard part. This is really how you and your team and your organization too can succeed and grow no matter what business you're in, including all those different types of businesses that I mentioned earlier in this video. The strategy journey framework is composed of five models that support each of the five stages of the strategy journey. We have the mission model supporting the motivation and leadership stage, the business model supporting the business design stage, the value model supporting the value design stage, the operating model supporting the business architecture stage, and the transformation model supporting the business transformation stage. And together, these five models and five strategic methods and with five tools as well. So yes, there are five strategy journey canvases that you can use to practice design thinking and operational excellence to help you join the dots with data. I get into a lot more detail on how you can use the models and the design canvases to guide you in the problem solving process in my book, including coverage of three paths and roadmaps that you can take step by step to achieve that successful strategy journey. Inside, you'll find real examples or case studies of business successes and failures and what and how they came to achieve growth. If you're interested in the book and any other resources we have on the strategy journey framework and how you can use it, check out the links in the description below and you can download an 80 page book sample as well. Well, in summary, we've covered what is business and why it's all about problem solving along its life cycle, which is the strategy journey and its five stages. The three digital economy challenges faced by all businesses and the three strategy journey principles that will help you, your career, your team and your organization win in the game of problem solving for success. In fact, here are some other videos related to navigating the strategy journey for business and career success. And if you like what you've learned so far, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel by clicking on the bell icon to be notified of my next and future posts. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.